The headquarters was a single park bench. They called it the office. Ozaya Silva was a choir observer. His best friend, Benedito Cesar, nicknamed Zico, was the fire. Together, they devoured grease stained aviation magazines. Every page was a reminder of a brutal truth. In the 20th century, the sky belonged to the superpowers. The planes that flew over their heads weren't just machines, they were symbols of American and European dominance. But Brazil? Brazil was just a customer, a place you landed, not a place you built. And for a boy like Zico, that wasn't just a fact, it was an insult. We gave the world Santos Dumont, Zico would mutter, his voice tight with frustration. And now we just watch? They didn't just watch, they studied. They built balsa wood models, they scavenged old radio parts. And when the townspeople laughed, saying, Avio e coisa de gringo, planes are for foreigners. They didn't argue, they went back to the bench and worked harder. At 17, they made a pact, not just to fly a plane, anyone could do that. Their vow was to build one, a Brazilian plane. And if the country wouldn't teach them how, they were forced to it. They enlisted in the Air Force, not out of pure patriotism, but as a strategy. It was the only place in Brazil that had the knowledge they carved. It was the only ladder out of Boru.